Hello Michelle, it's been a while. We had school holidays and none of the usual activities were running so I didn't really get the same kind of time, space that I usually have. And then over here a kid was sick and over here a kid was sick and over here I was sick and blah blah blah. Weeks and months and years have gone by, I'm older, I'm wiser. Not really. Years ago, I stumbled across the Lay Twins dance from 2010 that they did at World of Dance, which I will link below. And it was like mind blown. It was such a cool dance. And every now and then I like Google them again, see what they've been up to. And I hadn't watched any of their performances for the 2017 World of Dance. So I watched the video the other day of all of their performances in the World of Dance show from like their qualifying performance right through to the finals performance and they are so skilled and so amazing and I will link to that and I have no idea if you enjoy watching people doing really cool dance moves but that's my first interesting thing. My second is I signed up for a trial of one of those learning websites. I had been looking at Creative Bug because there were some really interesting artists and illustrators leading tutorials on there, uh, but I couldn't really justify, you know, let's say it's $13 a month or $20 a month or whatever it was. I couldn't really say that I was really going to enjoy it, so I didn't really want to sign up for it. And you know, you can get books out from the library and just follow along with tutorials or look at YouTube and so was, would it really be better than that? And then they had a special, I went back to their website one day and they had a special like um, sign up for like next to nothing. I think it was like $8 and you'll get six months. And I was like, wow, I can really try it out in six months. I can watch so many classes and really figure out if it's my bag or I might just like watch so many classes and then six months is enough and so I've been watching different things on there I've been really enjoying some of the watercolor tutorials by Yao Cheng and I've also been really enjoying some of the draw drawing tutorials by Lisa Congdon but also other ones as well like I haven't even mentioned just you know I've been watching all random things from like um, DIY making interesting envelopes to different ways of um, painting and working in journals and diaries and whatever. This week I've been watching one video by Lisa Congdon every night before bed and the ones that I'm watching at the moment are on line drawings showing with simple shapes like whether it's just straight lines, curved lines, circles, triangles, whatever it is, how you can build it up and how you can add complexity and then how you can make things pop even just with using black pen and white paper to make really visually interesting works. I love the library. I used to completely ignore the library. I can't remember how I felt about it as a child, but definitely as soon as I became like a young adult I thought that the library was pretty boring and who goes there and if I want a book and it's going to be a really good book I want to own it, I don't want to give it back. It was a real inconvenience having to go to the library. I never really felt comfortable like using the computers, I didn't really know what the uh, breadth and depth and range that they had was. The, library layout didn't make sense to me like you'd basically know that there's fiction and non-fiction but you you don't really know what the offering is and yeah the computer stuff was just really clunky like if you don't really know what to search for like say if the way that you're looking for a book is here are the things that have been, I've enjoyed so what's something similar to that there's no way that you can use a computer to do that kind of search or what are some things that people have been liking recently? Like what are some popular books? Or what are some things that have been bestsellers lately? What are some things that have been prize winners lately? You can't, like it's so ridiculous because they're like 
if a person came into a shop and they were looking for a book, they would be maybe the sort of ways that they would be shopping for something to read. And libraries just work, work on keywords. So you have to be like, I want a book on art or I want a book by this particular author who, you know, if, if someone's given you a very particular recommendation, then you could look that up. So libraries, please employ me and let me help make your <laughs> systems really cool. One thing that I found when I had kids and I started making lots of trips to the library to get kids books was that I could find a book that we had enjoyed, look up the author and just press reserve on all of their other books. So like, you know, some kids authors have done like 40 books, but they've done them maybe written them with other authors and stuff like that. And because not all of the books will be available right now, like some of them will be hired out at the moment, then when you put a reserve on like 20 books, then they kind of drip feed in. So you get notifications from the library like tomorrow that five books are in and another few days after that, another five books are in. They're coming in from other libraries or people are returning them. And I really wish that they actually had a an option to stagger it to like say I want to order out max 20 books a week so like don't place my reservation orders um, if my if my current borrowing is too big sort of thing anyway once I started doing it for the kids and I'm making these regular like weekly or even more than weekly trips to the library and occasionally I sort of would go up by myself and I would have a wander around and I saw that yeah it is really confusing because they'll have like art books here that are a certain size and then they have the art folio books here and then in another display they'll have some art books there and it's just so hard to know what's in the library but one of the things that I found out was that on the library website you could also request that they purchase a book and I gave it a go like last year I was like I'm kind of curious about Gros Doré's book but I don't really want to buy it but I'm sure that lots of other people will, will be wanting to read it as well because she's such a style icon. So I'll just place a you know request for that. And it was just like, yep, sure, we've ordered that in. And soon enough, I got it. And since then, I've requested like at least 10 art books. And I think for all of them, they've made a purchase order, um, which is just amazing because... And then I see that you know other people are reserving them as well. Once they make it available, there's interest on these books. I don't know how they keep on purchasing books, but at the same time, you know, have finite space. But they must just be doing big rotations of like these books are old, these books are fresh. Let's do a revamp. I have no idea. So yes, I now love my library, and I have like at least. 30 books at the moment, most of them are kids and about 10 books are for me. And I read just a few pages of each of the books that I borrow each day. So I make this really slow but steady progress through the books. And sometimes I have to renew them after the three weeks and that's completely fine and it's really nice. And very occasionally I read one that I'm like, yes, I would really like to purchase that. I would like to have that on my shelf to be able to refer to that again or for my kids to be able to grow up and that's on the shelf and they can access it one day and I'm like, oh, it's a super cool book for them to find. I like more sort of lighthearted TV shows. I don't really like nighttime and you've had a full day of, you know, you've read the news and you've talked about things that are happening out in the world and um, people you know might be going through stuff, whatever, and you are concerned for, like the way the Australian government is treating refugees, asylum seekers. Uh, you're concerned about the way that the government is giving tax breaks to wealthy people and are not doing anything about lessening the gap between the super wealthy and the super not wealthy and trying to make more equity in general. At the end of the day, I don't really like sitting down and watching like a gripping drama or like a a murder mystery or a gruesome tale of another place and time like you know Game of Thrones or The Expanse which is one set in space or these ones that James enjoys watching I just 
I don't really want to deal with like <sighs> it's just uh, I, l I like to watch something that is just like a little bit more cheerful and I really enjoyed Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I enjoyed The Good Place and I just finished watching the first season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel which in Australia is on Amazon Prime but I just signed up for a 30 day trial and then I got access. It's only 8 episodes. They've been renewed for a second and third season which is fantastic and I hope that they have a substantial enough story to be able to do that. But I watched the whole pilot episode on YouTube and I kind of did it by accident because someone had mentioned it like to someone else that I know, like maybe it was on Twitter or something and they were like, this is a really cool show. And so it's in the back of my mind and then I saw it in the like, you know, the little thumbnails on YouTube and I thought it was just a trailer and I started watching it and I was like, this is really good and I'm watching and watching and watching and I'm like hang on how long have I been watching this trailer for and then I'm like it's 10 minutes out of you know 40 minutes video and I'm like hang on this isn't a trailer and then I just kept on watching and then I was like okay where can I watch the second episode and so then I signed up for Amazon Prime and it's different it's like the writer of Gilmore Girls which I appreciate it as a concept, but I actually found it really annoying as a show. So I never really watched Gilmore Girls. But yeah, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, lead female character, hooray. The lead female character um, passes the Bechdel test. She talks to other women about things that are not men. And it's a delightful show and well written and great characters and even like the characters that you might think are schmucks or something like that, you know, they, they round them out. You're like, oh, they're not so much of a schmuck. Or the characters that you think are like the bomb, they round them out and you're like, hmm, yeah, they've got their flaws. So I really appreciated that. I had a few questions. Firstly, what do you do if you want to give a place a negative review or like a service or something? Do you actually do it or do you just kind of go, oh, I'll do that later and never actually do it or just go, oh well, I just won't go back to them and then that's my negative review. I'm voting with my money, something like that. I never know what to do because like Google changed it so you can't do anonymous reviews now and I feel really uncomfortable about that because whenever anyone would search my name on Google they would be able to come up with how I feel about like where I go and you know my experiences and stuff which I'm really uncomfortable about and also if it's a local business then if you say like I've had three really bad experiences at blah whatever and I've decided that that's it, I'm not gonna go back. And you have to like walk past them every time you go to the bakery or something and they know you, then yeah. I wish that Google hadn't changed the way they did that. I mean, I understand why they did, but surely they can verify you and then allow you to have like a, a nickname or something. Uh, so yeah, what do you do about that? The next one is how did you finally get started on getting your kitchen done because I know that you like me have great difficulty in getting big things done like when it's not something that's just like I can tick that off my to-do list it's like kitchen renovation like how did you actually start doing that do you still read with a kindle and separate but related do you have any book recommendations if you're if you're not feeling good about yourself like you feel a bit uh, bad moody or flat or whatever what are things that you do to vump yourself out of that or do you not do you just let go oh well I'm bad moody today and lastly I haven't forgotten that our next art challenge which was actually for June which will totally maybe be for July, maybe not, I don't know when I can do it, 
but I have not forgotten about the mixed media still life challenge and I will do that. I will not say when. You will not know when it will be. Uh, I love you, bye. I love you, bye. Lovely to see you swimming, bye. Hi, Greg, bye. Hi, Greg, bye. Bali is fun, bye, bye, bye. The beer is cheap, bye, bye, bye. But it also feels, bye, bye, bye. A bit exploitative, bye, 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 bye. I love you, bye. I love you, bye.